Today, we are going to share with you our top five Ontario Provincial Parks. There are 340 provincial parks in Ontario, and 85 of those are for car camping. Now, car camping is the type of camping that we do, the type of videos that you see us do, where you drive into your site and you park your RV or you pitch your tent. Uh, that's car camping. Uh, all the other ones would be fly in, uh, train in, or uh, paddle in interior type camping. So we're only going to be talking about the car camping type. And of those 85 car camping, we've been to probably about 20 of them. But this video is going to be our top five based on the last two years in which we've been doing reviews of provincial parks. So without further ado, number five. Number five is Arrowhead. And we loved Arrowhead. We went there uh, in 2019. It's a, a nice sized park. It has some really nice trails, some nice beaches, and a really nice dog beach. Good for watercraft. We uh, kayak Stubbs Falls. Yeah, Stubbs Falls, so there's a really nice hike to Stubbs Falls, or you can canoe or kayak down the river to get there. Now, there's no way you're gonna be actually kayaking or canoeing over Stubbs Falls. It's a very steep falls, but it's a nice destination where a lot of people get out and uh, enjoy the falls and very photogenic, very scenic. As well, they have uh, nice large private campsites. It's just outside of Huntsville. So it's very close to Huntsville. If you forgot anything, if you need anything, you can run into town. Huntsville has everything that you need, Walmart, uh, grocery stores. Um, they have uh, five beaches. One of them is a dog exercise area. Uh, they have nice trails for hiking and biking. It just seems like an all around nice family campground, older, old fashioned campground. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So that's Arrowhead. So now we move on to- Number four. And number four is... Restore. Restore we went to uh, this just past this past summer. summer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not too far from Arrowhead. It's just a little farther north of Arrowhead on uh, Highway 11. Um, and it is a really nice park too. Uh, it has two lakes, Restool Lake and Stormy Lake, with a river connecting them. Um, and as you know, we like to do our water sports. We have our kayaks and uh, stand-up paddleboard, and we really like spending time in the water doing that. So these two lakes are a really nice size for doing that and provide some pretty nice scenery. Mm -hmm. so you don't have any big waves that you have to fight against. It's right. Just good scenic paddleboarding, kayaking, canoeing, etc. Yeah. Um, the waterfront sites are very nice, so you can keep your uh, your uh, kayaks, canoes, paddleboards right there at your site and just go out from there. And you can even swim from your site. Nice sandy bottom. Mm -hmm. There's three beaches and a pet exercise area uh, where the dogs can run in the water. Uh, that's also a real nice thing. Campsites. Um, the sites closest to the water, the first three rows, are a little bit crammed. But once you get further away from there, you get really nice big sites and a lot of privacy. Hiking. Good for hiking and biking. Nice trails, fire. Yeah, the fire tower trail. Fire tower trail. That's one of the nicest hikes you've ever been on. Yeah, it starts off in a uh, pine forest with tall pines then moves through different types of forests. It's really interesting how in one area you get multiple types of terrain uh, on this one hike. And then it... Uh, vegetation, I guess. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for, vegetation. Yeah. yeah. And it culminates in the lookout mm -hmm. at the fire trail. Mm -hmm. That's um, a nice trail. Yeah. And there's the uh, tower. It's the fire tower trail, right? Isn't that what we said? I don't know. I don't know. But fire yeah. tower trail. So the fire tower is still there. It's decommissioned, but it's kind of cool to see. Uh, you can see it from Stormy Lake when you're uh, kayaking through there and you get right up to it uh, when you're hiking the trail. Um, and then you go to the lookout over Stormy Lake and it is a beautiful lookout. It's nice to spend some time there. Mm -hmm. Number three, Charleston Lake. First time there this past summer. 
We really enjoyed it. Um, one thing that really stood out for me about Charleston Lake are the sites. The sites were huge. I loved how big the sites were. And then what's really nice about Charleston Lake are the water sports. Um, the area around the beaches and the canoe launch, uh, no motorboats are allowed in that area. But uh, once you go out a little ways, there's some boys there and motorboats are permitted there. So there is also a boat launch. If you have a power boat, you can put in there. Uh, but if you're swimming and doing your kayaking and uh, um, paddle boarding, you don't want to be around the power boats, you've got a huge area of the lake that you can do that. Um, there's a lot of interior camping at Charleston Lake. And because of that, there's really nice canoe and kayak routes. Takes you down into Slim Bay. Mm -hmm. You can stop off, check out some of those uh, campsites. Interior sites. Yeah. It's uh, really nice. Lots of islands to go around. Uh, yeah, we one of, popped out and explored a few yeah. spots. And one of the trails that we didn't do, which is supposed to be a really nice trail along a ridge, um, you actually have to paddle to get to it. Um, we didn't go do that trail. Uh, when we go back next time, and we will go back, uh, we'll end up doing that trail because I'm told that was the nicest trailer there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to do it. Yeah. Charleston Lake had several other hikes that we did do. They were very nice and very scenic. Fireflies. Fireflies. Yes, fireflies. Never seen anything like that at an Ontario Provincial Park. Yeah, at night in the forest. Yeah. I see the flickering lights all through it. Yeah, the only time That's I've cool. ever seen that before is when we were in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I have a little bit of footage of, of uh, that at Charleston Lake. That's the fireflies were, were really, really nice. I don't know if it's just that time of year, if it's unusual or not, but when we were there, it was just beautiful seeing those fireflies. And there were a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Numero dos. Number two. Hi, Harry. Pinery, our old standby. We've been going to Pinery for 30 years. It's close to home for us, so. And it's on Lake Huron. Lake Huron, you can't beat with sunsets. That's the best place we find. Yeah, any of those parks along Lake Huron. Pinery, McGregor Point, Point Farms, Envy Huron, greatest sunsets ever. Mm -hmm. Pinery is one of the larger parks again. It has over a thousand campsites, 10 kilometers sandy beaches. Yeah, so all you have to do is walk west from any site and you're going to be on a beautiful sandy beach. Mm -hmm. They have a nice visitor center, restaurant, store, ice cream, and the Ospel channel for your water sports such as kayaking, canoeing, paddleboard. Yeah. No, no motorized boats though. Yeah, no. I wouldn't do most of our water sports in, in Lake Huron. It's a big lake. It can get pretty choppy. And there's really not much to see there. It's just a big shoreline. But you go down the Osborne Channel mm -hmm. and uh, you can see different types of birds, turkeys, um, lots of uh, turtles sunning themselves. Yeah. Good hiking. But yeah, Pinery, uh, love that park. That's why we keep on going back year after year. It's a big, really nice park. But now we've made it to our number one. Do, 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 do. Algonquin Park. Algonquin. Of all the parks we've ever been to, and we're talking in Ontario and in the States, of all the parks you've ever been to, in my book, and I probably can talk for you in your book, Algonquin is the nicest park we've ever been to. Now granted, it's a little different from all the other parks because it's massive, something like 7,000 square kilometers. Um, Not a park you can do in one trip. Right. Uh, we used to go into Algonquin Park when we used to do interior camping on canoe trips. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a thing we used to do. Now we're a little older. We, uh, like our, yeah, we like our travel trailer. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're parking at the organized campsites along Highway 60 in Algonquin Park. And there's something like 9, 10 or 11 or whatever organized campsites uh, along Highway 60. Yeah, we've stayed at Canis Bay. And most recently, Pog Lake we've been going to the past few years. Yeah, I love Canis Bay too, but we've kind of settled on Pog. Mm -hmm. Been going to for the last few years. Yeah. Mostly because we like the one area in Pog that has uh, a lot of waterfront sites. 
and beautiful views uh, and uh, not a bad sunset from there too. Mm -hmm. um, In Algonquin, we've got many, many hiking trails. You have to drive to get to them to start. And they're like a kilometer and a half up to 38 kilometers. Mm -hmm. So they got something for everybody. And those hiking trails, many of them have beautiful lookouts where you get to a very high elevation and uh, you can overlook a huge area. It's really nice, good payoffs on those hikes. Mm -hmm. What else do we like? Two outposts. Yeah. Uh, visitor center, large, huge visitor center. Best visitor center we've ever been to. Uh, it really tells you about the history uh, and the landscape of the park. Mm -hmm. um, Along with that, there's the logging museum. It's got a self-guided trail, three kilometers. Yep, three kilometers through the woods. I really enjoy doing that. Yeah, it actually, Definitely you learn a lot times. about Algonquin Park. Most people see Algonquin Park is just a place that they go camping in, but they are actively logging Algonquin Park and they have for centuries. So it's uh, very interesting learning about that, the logging museum. And there's an art gallery as well. Yeah, we've been to the art gallery once. Across, kind of across from Canis Bay near the beginning of Algonquin. Mm -hmm. um, so when you stay at one of the places like Pog Lake, you can go to any of the other campgrounds there because your pass is for Algonquin Park, so you can go anywhere there. Mm -hmm. So some of the other parks uh, or some of the other campgrounds have trails from them, like... Uh, when we bike from Pog to Lake of Two Rivers. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful lake. trail. Old rail trail. Yeah. It's where and we saw our first bear. Right. in yeah. the. Mom and bear. Right close to the blueberry patch. Mm -hmm. There's a huge field of blueberries. So the bears go there and they eat the blueberries. Mm -hmm. That's where you go to uh, the store. There's yeah. a little store, Lake of Two River store. It's got a little restaurant and um, store where you can buy camping things and you can get ice cream. And usually when you're doing the drive to any of these hikes into the, the store and the museums and stuff, you want to keep your eyes open for moose. And we've seen a moose a few times at the side of the road. Usually you'll know when there's a moose because everybody's pulled over there and they're all trying to take pictures of the moose. Yeah, you just need to keep your distance because they are huge. If you've never seen a moose in real life, mm -hmm. you'll be shocked at how big they are. They are huge and they can be dangerous. So you need to stand back, give them their space. So Algonquin, you can't do it all in one trip unless you're there for the entire summer maybe. But if you're there for a week, um, you can't do it all. There's a lot of things you can do. Uh, it just means you need to come back again and you can try the other parks. Like I said, we've done Canis Bay and Pog. Mm -hmm. um, some friends of ours have done Lake of Two Rivers New Lake. and Mew Lake. They love that. Actually, Mew Lake is the uh, only campground, I believe, that's open during the winter. It's got the yurts. So if you are into winter camping, that's the spot to go. And we're gonna keep on going back to Pog Lake uh, year after year. Um, we'll see. No, well, maybe not Pog Lake, but we'll try some other, yeah. other campgrounds. We have a lot of provincial parks to cover. Yeah. And so that's what we're doing now. We're trying to make sure we can do uh, more provincial parks, not just keep on going back to the same ones, which we've done for years. Mm -hmm. But since we've uh, started doing reviews in this channel, we've made a real concerted effort to go to different provincial parks and explore them. And it's worked out pretty well for us because we found some real gems. Uh, most of these parks that we've mentioned today, we hadn't been to before. Uh, Arrowhead, Restool, uh, Charleston Lake, uh, we'd never been there before. Uh, just in the last two years while doing reviews is when we uh, first went to them and they made it into our top five. So we're going to continue to explore uh, a lot more provincial parks. Season three is coming up and uh, we hope to get, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine parks in. Um, and we'd like to spend there's at least so many, three or four days there. There's so many nice provincial parks. Um, there's ones that we haven't listed that are still excellent to go to, but we pick these top five. And yours might be very different. Depends what you'd like to do, what you're looking for. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have any suggestions for a park that we should go to, please let us know in the comments. We're now making our plans for this summer. And if you think there's an exceptionally good park, let us know because mm -hmm. we want to go there and we want to do a review of it. And that's it. We'll see you at the next campground. Bye. Bye.